man. I'm a covenant man. Living in the riches of my Lord and King, I'm a covenant man. I'm a covenant man. Committed to Him in everything I do, believe He'll come again. And I know one thing I'm gonna do till then is learn to live in the blessing of Abraham. The Lord told me how He wants me to be, to abide in Him and His Word in me. Anything I ask. Hello everybody, David Weeder here, and welcome to the broadcast today. I wanted to introduce these next series of broadcasts. Uh, these are taken from a message that I did in South Carolina at Living Faith Ministries, Pastor Al Downing's church. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful ministry. But these next three broadcasts are taken from that service. And I wanted to read you something out of John 15. Now, these two scriptures that I'm going to read you today, they are the baseline for these next three messages. Nothing that I say in these messages pertains unless it's based on what I'm about to read you. Okay? So let's look at, at John chapter 15. John chapter 15, and let's start in verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. Obviously, these words are read. Jesus is talking here. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Did you hear me? Did you hear Jesus? Without Jesus, you can do nothing. You got that? He is the vine. Now turn with me over to the book of Acts. And uh, let's, let's see how the Apostle Paul explains it in Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17 and verse 28. Speaking about the Lord here. The Apostle Paul says, For in Him... Sound familiar? Yeah, it should. That's what Jesus was talking about. For in Him we live and move and have our being. Glory to God in Him. Take some time. There are 204 references in the New Testament of either in Christ, in Him, by Him, through Him. All those different variations, 204 references. That's what these next three broadcasts are based on being in Him, living and moving and having our being in Him. Now, with that understanding, now let's enjoy this broadcast together. Hebrews chapter 5. And we're going to start in verse 12, and we're going to read on down into chapter 6. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, Paul's given a little bit of an admonishment here, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat, everybody say strong meat. Strong meat. Strong meat belongs to them that are of full age or mature, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ... Let us go on unto perfection or maturity, 
not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of the laying on of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and the eternal judgment. And this will we do, this moving on from the, from the basic principles of the doctrines into maturity if God permits. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for the word today. I thank you. I'm asking you to think through my mind, speak through my lips, that my tongue be as the pen of a ready writer. And I give you thanks and praise for all that you will bring forth today in transforming people's lives. And I'm asking you that not one single person in this room or within the sound of my voice be unchanged forever by the power of God through your word sir in Jesus name amen Amen. alright I want to draw to your attention to a couple things chapter 5 verse 14 but strong meat now I understand it's a little bit early on a Sunday morning, but are y'all ready to chomp around on a little strong meat today? Okay, all right. We're going we're gonna to chomp around on some strong meat today. Strong meat belongs to them that are a full age, even to those who, now look at this, by reason of use, by habit, by continually exercising it, developing it by reason of use have their senses exercised now if you dig around a little bit in that word senses it means judgment apprehension it also means the physical organs of sense so it's the information that you get and develop in the physical realm with your knowledge your intellect apprehension you remember paul says i have apprehended but one thing Okay, understanding, learning. So it's by reason of use, of habitually understanding and exercising in order to obtain the strong meat. Okay, you've got to think about it, all right? So, that being said, I want to talk to you today You know, a lot of people say, I'm going to, you know, this this message is going to transform your life, okay? Well, this one, literally, scripturally speaking, will do that very thing. And I think it's, I think it's interesting that this is the last service here moving into a new facility, taking a new step. I want to challenge you to take what the Lord's bringing forth today and use this move, use this step as a marking place to step into this. Amen. All right? Amen. Turn over to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, and we're going to go ahead and start in verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. All right, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed, mm-hmm. how are we going to do it? By the renewing of your mind. That's right. That you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There's several things that I want to point out about this scripture. One of which is that, that is not, it is not done by the renewed of your mind. It's not done by, I renewed my mind once. That's right. That's right. Okay? That's right. 
It's done by the renewing of your mind. Now that fits right in with what we just saw in Hebrews. It's a continual exercise, a habit, the continual renewing of your mind. Now, word of faith, folks, from what I've seen over the years, they kind of shy away from mind. You know, because, you know, years ago there was the whole, you know, that's just positive thinking stuff. You know, that's just nothing but positive thinking. That's just, you know. So they've kind of completely steered away from that. But according to the scripture, we're reading scripture, right? That's right, that's right. Okay, we're reading scripture. According to the scripture, it is by the renewing of your mind that your life is transformed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, right. that's what it's by. Now, lest there be any confusion, that word mind, if you look into it, means intellect, Mm -hmm. it means thoughts, and it means understanding. So it it literally means what it says, your mind. It's It's not talking about your spirit in this particular situation, because your faith can grow exceedingly. You put the word in, faith's coming. That's right, that's right. Faith's coming. Faith's coming faith's coming but it doesn't transform your life until you renew your mind to it i think i think most of you have seen this illustration uh if you haven't then go ahead and do it with me start counting in your mind silently to yourself from one to ten now now out loud tell me your name okay for those of you who out loud told me your name what happened to your counting it stopped so your words interrupted that inward dialogue right okay But let's take that back one step. For those of you who didn't out loud tell me your name, why didn't you? Well, you were counting, but you heard me say it, right? So why didn't you do it? Because you didn't make up your mind to do it. Right? Because there's people that did it. So it wasn't that you couldn't have done it. You just didn't make up your mind to do it. So yes, your words, once you spoke them, interrupted that internal dialogue and produced the power to say the words. But you had to make up your mind to say the words. All right? It's by the renewing of your mind that it transforms your life. That's what gets the power out because you have to renew your mind to it before you speak it right all right i mean you can speak it but not if you don't think about it first okay so a couple questions just kind of beg to be asked here what is being transformed okay it just it says it says be you transformed By the renewing of your mind. Okay. Well, so is this talking about your spirit? No. Because you're born again, not of incorruptible seed, but of corruptible seed by the word of God. So your spirit was created perfect. Right? All right. So that's not what's being transformed. The verse one talks about presenting your bodies. So what it's talking about here is your physical life, your life on this earth. Okay? That's what's being transformed. Okay, so that's the first question. Because you get to know what's going to be transformed if you want it transformed. So the next question we're going to come back to, it says, be be you not uh, conformed to the world. Well, if we're not supposed to be conformed to the world... What are we supposed to be conformed to? It must be something we're supposed to be conformed to. 
if we're not to be conformed to the world. So we need to find that out. And then uh, what are we renewing our mind to? If we're transformed by the renewing of our mind, what are we going to renew our mind to that's going to produce the transformation that we desire? Now, yeah, you can say, well, you, you renew your mind to the word. And that's absolutely the truth. That is accurate. But it can be a little bit more accurate. There are some things in the word that we're specifically told to renew our minds to. All right. So before we get into that, we need to lay a little bit, excuse me, a little bit of groundwork. Because I don't want anybody here or anybody there to go off and say that Brother David said something he didn't say. Because we're going to we're chomping around on some some strong meat. Right. Okay, so we don't want anybody going off uh, and, and getting themselves in trouble. <laughs> so go over to John 15. And we're going to lay a little bit of groundwork. And, uh, and then we'll get back to the renewing of the mind. John chapter 15. And we're going to start in verse 1 and read down through verse 10. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. You know, when you got your Bible underlined so much, you got to look at the words and say, what is it? Okay. <clears throat> now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. For without Jesus, you can do nothing. For without Jesus, you can do nothing. No thing. Nothing. Got that? We're going to come back to it. If you don't have it this time, you'll get it really soon. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men, men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. All right. So, without... Jesus, we can do nothing. nothing. Okay, so we can do nothing without Jesus. Jesus. So when it means to, when it says to abide in me and I in you, we're kind of back to that continual idea. You live there. You abide there continually so basically i'm not talking to the once a week christians right i'm not talking even just to i'm not talking to the sunday and the wednesday christians all right i'm talking to the sunday morning the sunday afternoon the sunday evening the monday morning going to work okay these these 
are the ones that are not without Jesus. So they can do all things. That's right. That's right. Right? Okay. The ones that abide. That's the ones we're talking about. Okay. All right. Just want to be clear on that. Now, go with me over to 1 John. 1 John. Chapter 4. And we're going to read verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. Now, drop down to verse 16. And we have known and believed. Known. Hmm. So we've got understanding and faith. Remember we were talking about understanding and thoughts and knowledge? So now we've got you have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. God doesn't have love. He is love. He can't be anything but love because that's what he is. Okay? Now, all right, here's where we're going we're gonna to get a little wild here now, all right? Pastor, can I borrow you for a moment? Now, Pastor is John 15, all right? Without Jesus, we can do nothing, all right? John 15. Brother, can you help me out? All right. Right here, we got 1 John 4. God is love. Okay? Now, right here, we got you and me. We got the born again, spirit filled Christian. Right? All right. All right. Now, over here I've got, without Jesus, I can do nothing. nothing. Over here I've got, God is love. As long as I am connected right here, my, my, my. then I can stand right here. Yeah. And with all humility, mm-hmm. and with all yes, confidence yes, and sir. knowledge, mm-hmm. know that I am a God. I didn't stutter. Mm-hmm. That's right. I am a God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, that's a pretty cool radical statement. But out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established, right? Mm-hmm. right, right. All right. So we're going to look at at least six. There's a whole lot more of them. But we're going to look at, thank you, gentlemen. We're going to look at at least six and uh, chomp around on this meat for a while. All right. Now, I know, I, I, I'll admit, I'll admit that was a little bit of a, a, of a teaser leaving you hanging right there at that break. But, it, hey, come back next time and uh, let's see where we go from there. Remember, remember, right here and right here. God is love and without Jesus, you can do nothing. And what I just said doesn't apply. We'll see you next time. Remember, Jesus is Lord.